What's up, boat lovers? We're over here at Marine Max Pompano working on a L65 C Ray with two stations and one joystick location in the aft cockpit. We were called here to diagnose the situation because the system is timing out and it's a fully electronic Lindenning control system. So we're here with a harness cable and this is our test cable so that we're able to diagnose what is going on. But most likely I have us feeling that it is a communication fault and we're here to diagnose what the issue is. Follow us while we do this. All right, so first thing that we end up doing is turning on the engine ignitions. And normally when you turn it on, on this particular boat, these control heads and the joystick should come on live, but it's not. So you could actually see it's gonna take a couple seconds, normally about 15 seconds, and now we're all in flashing lights. Okay, so now we're here to determine that we know that it's a communication fault or a communication issue. We can't even pull alarms off of this. Normally, we'll be able to do that by moving the handle forward and turning the system on and then press a, a sequence of buttons, but we can't do that when we're going into a, a timeout alarm like this. So what we're gonna do is, it is highly unlikely that we have all five control heads defective. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna remove this control head, taking it with this harness, and we're gonna plug it directly right into the engine room processor that is located back there. All right, so I removed the cover for here, and as you can see underneath the control head, there are these little screw ties that we have to remove. So, oh, wing, nuts. wing nuts? Nylon wing nuts. Nylon wing nuts. So these are the nylon wing nuts that we have to remove and the brackets that keep it in place. So we're gonna remove the control head, we're gonna take it to the engine room and then test it with the new communication cable. That's correct, yeah. To see if there's a communication issue. Yeah, if it's a communication. All right, guys, I just want to clarify this. This boat is equipped with three stations. The aft cockpit is a joystick location, and we have the main helm, and upstairs we have the bridge. The system that is on this boat is sophisticated. It has a joystick function that a kid that knows how to play video games could dock this boat, okay? Now, the situation that we're running into with this is very rare, but the boat has been sitting in the yard for over a year. It's been a trade-in boat, and it came in on its own power working, and then all of a sudden, now they splashed it, and now they're having some issues. So, anything could happen. It could be lightning, it could be electrical surge in the shore power, we don't know. That is mother nature taking over and that has nothing to do with the equipment failure. So just to let you know that anything can happen in a yard as far as mother nature, but we're here to determine what's gonna happen. And Julian right now has a control head out. Where is he? He's always sitting on the job. I'm always sketching him. He has a control head in his hand and we're gonna take that down to the engine room so that we could plug that harness directly right into the processor and bypass anything that is in the daisy chain of the communication line. All right, guys, we have station one control head, a harness. It is keyed in a certain, it has a key and it only goes in a certain way, okay? So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna screw this harness in here and then taking the other harness and connecting it to the processor on the other side. Right, so we just put a terminating resistor in placement of one of the con connections right here. We connected our communication harness right here. For example, this is a terminating resistor. It goes on the end of each communication line. So there should both be two in line, either on the processor or on the end of two control heads. So we're gonna put this on the control head now, and then we're gonna plug in our Deutz connector to find out if the system powers up. 
All right, so as you can see, he's putting in the terminating resistor into the control head that we took from the main, main station. So now, now we're gonna check and see if it powers on. All right, we're gonna plug in the 12 pin. He's gonna plug in the 12 pin. Blitz connector, and the system should power up. In 15 And now, it's still timing out because the system should come live. So we know that there is a communication process problem with the processor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna further diagnose the situation by removing the processor, taking this control head, putting it on our bench to verify which one is the failure point. But most likely that we have a situation with the main processor and we'll notify the factory and get the repair parts so that this book could be on the water as fast as possible. So Dad, do you have that processor ready? Yeah, the processor is ready. It's been running for 72 hours. This is for the L650 C-Ray that we took out. We brought it to the shop to do bench test and we found out that the processor was defective. Here's the main board that we took out of it. So we have issues with that board. That board we do not touch. We normally discard that board. Uh, but we're not going to go to the boat empty-handed not only with this processor We're going to go with our backup this is another so that we in case we do have a situation with something we have a solution But also we have our items on the bench this is a smart actuator one that we're going to be doing some service on We're going to refurbish this one and this customer just dropped off this 9100 ZF Clear command that we need to figure out why it doesn't have a shift command but not only that, we have your items coming. You're doing some test runs on some patterns. And then also, we got some nice work that's coming in for our customer. So this is what they wanted. This is what they get. And as you can see, we got some things on the floor too. So this is a work in progress, guys. Sorry that our shop is a little bit of a mess, but in a couple of weeks, it'll be all cleaned out. All right, guys, so we're back on the boat. My job now is to install the processor with the new board that my dad installed. And then we're gonna move on to installing the control head that we took out. All right, the same way the unit came out, it's going back in. We're putting in the processor now. Once that thing is plugged in, then we're gonna go ahead and install the number one station and power up the system. Hopefully, the programming will still stay the same. If not, we're going to have to go through the programming procedure. Now that we got both device net cables connected to the, the unit, we're going to go ahead and place that in the hole and not mount it yet, just in case we have to do some further testing on it. But now we're going to go ahead and turn on the control system and verify that the system is working. All right, we know that there's an alarm on this system. When we tested just this control head and the processor, we know that there was no problem with this control head or the processor. Now there's another issue. So in order for us to determine what the alarm is, we have to shut the system off, move the handles forward, turn the system on, and in sequence, you press the sink and the warm three times. One, two, three. That's gonna be the alarm count, and then you press that. You wait, there's a fast beep and a slow beep. So now we'll hear the fast beep blinking and then this is then that's the fast bleep. Nothing is illuminated. Now that's the slow beep. Three, sync, warm, and troll. That's an indicator of control head four pod issue. So now we're gonna go to control head four, take it out of the circuit, turn on the control system, and see if everything lights up. If everything works fine then we need to repair number four control head. All right, guys, we're taking an educational guess. Normally the way that system is labeled as ID, the lower station is ID one, this will be ID two, the joystick will be ID three, this will be ID four, and the aft station will be ID five. But we have yacht controller in here, so there's actually six stations on this boat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate this turn on the control system and see if everything lights up. We got the number four station, so I was correct. This is the parallel port that goes into this unit, comes out and it goes into this. 
So number four control head is actually bad because we're able to get the control system to light up, one, two, and now we're able to get the system to work. So now we could go forward, we could go reverse, forward, reverse. So we know that the system's working. Now we need to let the factory know, not the factory, let the yard know that we have additional issues with this that we're gonna have to inspect and repair. So this is gonna require another service call coming back to the boat after this is done. All right, we're back at it again. I've removed the jumper that let the system in operating mode so that they can move it to another marina. We've repaired our joystick. We've tested it at the bench. Everything is working. So now we're gonna go ahead and plug this in, verify that the programming is correct and go through all the programming procedures on this to verify that we have throttle and shift. And as you can see, we are dry docked. So we're gonna do our dry dock testing and verify that everything is working. All right, so now we're at, back at the main helm and now we're gonna go into the reconfiguration settings. Since we had a situation with the main processor, the board was defective. Now when we replaced it, now we have to tell the processor what we need out of it. So by doing that, we move the handles all the way forward. We go into our configuration settings, which you right now I've already went into that. Okay, and all the lights are displayed. So now I go to menu 10 with my sync. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I reset the system. Now the whole system is completely wiped out. There is no programming. So now we have to reintroduce the troll function for this particular vessel and whatever functions that this boat came with. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. And listen, hit us up. If you have anything in regards to Glen Denning products, ZF products, just anything, really, electrical issues on yachts or just boats, just, it doesn't have to necessarily be a multi-million dollar yacht. He could help out. So, guys, this one was a little challenging because we had multiple issues. We came prepared the first time and then it hit us by surprise on the second time. So, but we always have a solution, but not always we could take care of it the same time at the same day, but we were able to return back to the boat, get the boat seaworthy. Guys, follow us. Like us and subscribe. There you go.